Okay, to get us started, we're going to make the old fashioned. And to do that, we're going to make this in the glass with old fashioned and a lot of whiskey based drinks. You uh, stir when it's predominantly just spirits. You stir, you don't shake. So, we're not going to be using a shaker for this particular drink. Um, I'm going to be using a cast strength bourbon that was distilled right here in Durham. And uh, when you are mixing drinks, you actually want to start with your uh, ingredients that are a little bit cheaper. So, if you make a mistake, you haven't ruined your uh, liquor. This is just a simple syrup, and for a simple syrup, what we're going to do is just a bit of a, just a splash of this. Um, so I'm using a half ounce, but I'm actually pouring um, about a quarter of this, so about an eighth of an ounce uh, for my simple syrup. I have found that using the Angostura bitters, two dashes, and then I have found through trial and error that I like a little bit of orange bitters in mine, so I'm just going to put a single dash of orange bitters. Now the simple syrup, I'm using a Demerara shirt, which is a little bit more versatile and uh, blends a little bit easier with a variety of uh, ingredients. For this, I'm going to do two ounces of uh, bourbon. Okay, now you can just take the raw slice uh, and just drop it straight in. I'm actually going to shave it a little bit just to be a little fancier. And you can express over the glass, which basically means you're getting some of those uh, oils out of the rind and putting it into the drink itself. With an orange peel, I like to rub it around the rim just to give you a little bit extra. Now you have a nice orange twist, I just drop it in. Old fashioned. Our next drink is the Tequila Sunrise. This is another one that is made in the glass. And so we've got a Collins glass or a highball glass here. Uh, and it's got crushed ice. And partially because this is a drink where you want some of the texture to come through, this will make sense as you see the finished product. Uh, this is a pretty drink. It's one of my favorites. We are not using the shaker for this particular drink. Uh, we are going to be making it in the glass. So to get us started, we're going to put in four ounces of orange juice. Remember, we always start with some of the ingredients that you don't really care if you mess up. And then next we're going to put in the tequila. Now this is going to be out of order from typical and it'll make sense here in a minute. Uh, we're going to put in the tequila before the grenadine. And the reason is that uh, the way that these ingredients are going to come together is we want to put the tequila in first in tequila sunrise. As that settles down, it'll look more and more like a sunrise. For our garnish, I'm going to slice up an orange and top it with a maraschino cherry. Generally speaking, when you're dealing with garnishes, less is more. This is a giant orange slice, and uh, it, typically you, you wouldn't put something quite so ostentatious. Um, but the Tequila Sunrise is a little bit of an ostentatious drink. It's already got a lot going on, and so it's okay to go a little bit over the top. Um, but uh, it is one of the prettiest drinks. Um, the mixture of tequila and orange juice blends really well. The grenadine just adds a nice little touch to it, um, and uh, the garnish just kind of brings it all together. So, Tequila Sunrise. All right, we're going to talk about the martini for a bit. Now, according to the book that I've been reading, uh, Cocktail Codex, it is one of the base drinks, and you can basically uh, kind of make your way out to any number of drinks by starting with the core, the martini here. Uh, so for tonight's martini, we're going to use gin and dry vermouth. I'm going to garnish with uh, a couple of olives. However, uh, I actually have found in personal experience that a vodka martini, which is kind of the other acceptable version, a vodka martini. Uh, is preferable, but I prefer it with a lemon twist. And the martini can be customized in a number of different ways. You can have a dry martini where there is more of your base spirit than vermouth. Kind of a, a classic or a root martini would just be kind of a pretty even balance of about two to one, which is what we're going to be making tonight, two ounces to one ounce. Uh, or you can have a wet martini where basically it's a one to one ratio and you're dealing with one ounce and one ounce. And so uh, with, with all martinis, uh, they're going to be stirred. Contrary to James Bond and the way that he likes his drinks, um, we're going to be stirring. And the reason is, when you shake, 
uh, the ice that's in here uh, chips and it starts melting and actually waters down your drink. So when you order a shaken martini, you're actually ordering a weak drink. So um, not that I want to throw any shade at James Bond or anything, but you know, he could order a little bit stronger drink if he'd ask for it stirred and not shaken. Okay, let's get started. Notice I don't have a glass here. My glass is actually in the freezer because you want your glass as cold as possible. And so I'm going to get the glass out of the freezer uh, so that it is as cold as possible. We're gonna strain it in, we'll garnish, and we'll have ourselves a martini. There we go. Okay, the next drink is the Manhattan. And a Manhattan typically calls for two ounces of rye. And uh, I don't have rye, I'm using a Carolina whiskey that is a bourbon blend, but I've found that it's pretty spicy, which is what you want from the rye. And so this works pretty well uh, for my purposes. Uh, it calls for one ounce of vermouth, sweet vermouth. Um, this Dolan vermouth I found to be a major upgrade over the first vermouth that I bought um, that was cheap and from Target. Uh, so I recommend spending a little bit more money to get you a good vermouth. Uh, the two dashes of bitters, and the bitters are for seasoning. So you've got some spicy, you've got some sweet, you've got some seasoning. And this is a variant of a martini. And so instead of gin or vodka, we're using whiskey. And instead of dry vermouth, we're using sweet vermouth. And then because we've got the whiskey, we're going to put in the bitters for the seasoning. And then uh, what we're going to do is stir it up here. And then I've got a uh, chilled coupe in the freezer right now. And my brandy cherries are in the fridge. And so we'll make the drink press pause, and then we'll garnish, okay? Part of stirring is getting the ice to melt a little bit. Uh, it helps the ingredients to come together. It also cools it down. Alcohol has a lower freezing point, and so we're really wanting to stir for a good bit of time in order to get the ingredients to come together, but also to, to chill it. It's also why we have a chilled glass in the freezer, which I'm gonna get now. And then uh, these are some cherries that have been brandied. Uh, basically, you just put a bunch of brandy and some sugar in a mason jar, stick it in your fridge for about four weeks, and then you have homemade branded cherries. And Manhattan. Okay, so our next one, you notice we have a little different setup. We're actually going to do a blended drink, and this is going to be a pina colada. And this is a nice one for parties, especially with warmer weather. And so we've got uh, a scoop of ice in here. Uh, we're gonna add some rum. We've got pineapple juice, cream of coconut, and then we'll top it with a cherry. So let's get started. Of course, if that's a straw. Did you find it? Uh, this next one, uh, we're going to make a daiquiri. You'll notice there's no blender this time. Uh, you can make a frozen daiquiri. I am choosing not to. I'm um, going for a more traditional route. Um, there's a martini glass here, and incidentally, after buying this glass, I learned that this glass is actually pretty terrible for drinks. Um, you want something with a long stem on these stirred drinks. There's, there's not going to be any ice in this glass. Uh, so you want the long stem so that you don't actually hold the glass and warm up the drink. Uh, but you don't want something that's going to be quite so top heavy. So uh, a lot of the professional blogs are recommend what's called a Nick and Nora glass. And uh, so to get things started, we're actually going to put this in the freezer so this can get cold, uh, and we'll come back and actually make the drink itself. Whenever you're doing a sour drink, something that involves citrus of some kind, you always want to shake it to help the ingredients to uh, combine, and then. You can do it shaking the drink on time, and you can time out how long your shake should be, and then basically you shake, test, pour back in, shake some more, and basically what you're trying to do is figure out what's the right amount of shaking to get the right dilution from the ice uh, so the ingredients combine well. Uh, the other way to do it is basically by feel. Uh, you can't tell, but this is very cold right now. Uh, I put a lot of ice in here, when you shake, the whole shaker gets very cold. Uh, and that's one of the ways that I know that uh, it's done is when the entire shaker uh, is, is ice cold. So this is ready to go. We're just gonna uh, put this uh, lime wedge. You can float it. Uh, I'm gonna put it on the rim. And then you have a daiquiri. This weekend is the Kentucky Derby and a classic derby drink is the mint julep. Uh, so we're gonna 
put one of these together for you. Uh, mint julep is a variant of the old fashioned. Um, we've still got the bourbon, uh, we've got the simple syrup, but basically instead of bitters, we're utilizing mint. Um, and uh, the preparation's a little different on this one. So we're actually gonna start with the mint. I'm just gonna rub it on the inside of the glass here. And go ahead and add my ingredients. And you've got a nice derby drink in the mint julep. All right, next is the whiskey sour. Um, it's a pretty similar recipe to make an amaretto sour. It's another really popular one. Um, some of these drinks get to be interesting because they're actually going to involve egg white, which I have here. Um, and so basically what we're going to do is combine the ingredients. We're going to dry shake because we, what we're really wanting to do with the dry shake is make sure that the egg white is combined. So we're going to put our ingredients, we've got lemon juice, we're going to have simple syrup, we're going to have bourbon, we're going to have egg white, we're going to dry shake, make sure they're all uh, well combined, uh, and then we'll put some ice in it and we'll do an ice shake and then we'll pour it in our glass. One thing that we have to be careful about with the uh, whiskey sour and the emerald sour, anything that's using an egg white, is that uh, you can get a lot of pressure buildup. And so I'm going to put the lid on first and then add the cap, and then I've got to hold it real tight while I shake. All right, we get the ice, we'll go to the next step. The thing that we're looking for on the whiskey sour is nice froth. It should be pretty foamy and that's from the egg. And the way that you really make sure that you're getting that foam is a good dry shake. And so if you trim your dry shake too much, as a result, you'll get kind of a, a clear whiskey sour, which so a tip would be if you ever go to a restaurant and order whiskey sour and it comes out to you and it's basically translucent and you, you can see through that drink, uh, they didn't shake it well enough and you're dealing with a Maybe a little more amateur of a bartender. Whiskey sour. Okay, the next drink is the Negroni. Uh, this is actually a pretty easy drink to make, and uh, it is just equal parts sweet vermouth, Campari, and gin. And uh, we're going to do an ounce of each tonight. Um, the thing that I find interesting about this is you'll find this drink on a lot of menus. It's really popular in a lot of bars, a lot of a lot of restaurants will carry this drink. Um, if you don't prefer gin, which I know a lot of people don't, uh, keep the vermouth and the Campari, swap out the gin for bourbon, keep it in equal parts. You might want to tweak it just a little bit to personal preference, but uh, everything, all, all things being equal, uh, swap, swap this out for uh, whiskey or bourbon, and you have a new drink called a Boulevardier, which I actually really enjoy. Um, but tonight we're gonna make the Negroni. And so what I'm gonna do is pour all the ingredients into this mixing glass, Stir it up, pour it over uh, a glass on the rocks here, and uh, garnish with a little bit of orange, and we'll have the Negroni. One thing that I've learned over the course of the semester in making cocktails is that I have a tendency to not stir and or shake long enough, and as a result, the drink itself is actually better after it's been in the glass, uh, especially on the rocks, in the glass for uh, about three minutes or so. And some of that is just the dilution of the ice and letting the ingredients really come together. And so um, I've tried to be a little more conscious about how much I'm stirring or shaking uh, so that I can get some more dilution, let the ingredients really come together. Um, we went to a bar last week and um, sat at the bar to watch a bartender making drinks and he would frequently put the ingredients, stir, and then walk away and work on another drink. And so um, giving the ice just a little bit more time to melt, again, the water helps the ingredients to really come together. You can over dilute and then it tastes watered down. I'm not going for that, uh, but I do want the ingredients to really come together in this one, particularly because we've got some really competing flavors here with the, the bitter Campari, uh, we've got the juniper in the gin, uh, and then the sweet uh, aromatized wine. And so, because there's so much going on, I really want to make sure that they come together. Okay, and then I've just got a little orange that I'm just going to lightly express over the glass. I just want some of those oils to go in, and then basically as a chip, I'm just dropping it in. Uh, so that that way, it's 
kind of infusing its flavor. I can even see some of the oils from the orange coming into the drink itself. And let that sit a little bit uh, again. Uh, but other than that, it's ready to go and you have a Negroni. Cheers.